My name is Major Kent Griffiths and I retired from the Canadian Armed Forces with more than 43 years of service. Currently, I'm the Master of Ceremonies for the Field of Crosses Sunrise and Sunset Ceremonies. The Field of Crosses was the concept of philanthropist Murray McCann, who was driving through a small town in Georgia when he saw crosses on the roadside that represented the fallen from that community. He thought it was a great idea and decided to do it in Calgary. He met with his friend George Bittman from the Poppy Fund and together they came up with a scheme to do a similar field of crosses here in Calgary, Alberta. Currently, we put out 3,500 crosses to represent the fallen from southern Alberta. There are also 120 crosses that represent the 120,000 Canadian men and women who made that supreme sacrifice. Each year, hundreds of volunteers come out to help set up these crosses, and we host a sunrise and a sunset ceremony every day from the 1st to the 10th of November, and then of course, we have a Remembrance Day ceremony on the 11th. This is a remarkable and sometimes shocking experience for the Calgarians who drive by and discover a vast cemetery where an empty field had been the day before. That way they can remember. They can remember those people who gave up all of their tomorrows for our todays. I'm here at the cross of Captain Nicola Goddard, forward observation officer with the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery. She fell in Afghanistan in 2006 and was the very first female soldier to fall in combat. I didn't get to meet her when I was in Afghanistan, but I did go to her funeral and I have been inspired by her service. Over 112,000 Canadians have made the ultimate sacrifice defending Canada. Captain Nicola Goddard is one of them. May 17, 2006, Panjway District, Afghanistan. Goddard will have a critical role in a looming battle against the Taliban. For the 26-year-old, it's an important day, her father's birthday, the fourth anniversary of her graduation from the Royal Military College, and she's about to become the first female officer to lead Canadian soldiers into battle. Nicola was born on Papua New Guinea, the first of Tim and Sally Goddard's three daughters. When Nicola was four, the Goddards moved to Canada. Over the next 16 years, they would move again nine times as Tim and Sally took teaching jobs in remote areas of the country. After high school, Nicola attended Canada's Royal Military College. After graduating with honors, Nicola joined the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery. In 2006, she went to Afghanistan, Canada's first shooting war since Korea in 1951. In May, Nicola, her team, and 200 Canadian soldiers advanced on a Taliban-held village in Panjway near Kandahar. Under constant fire, Nicola bravely stood in the tour of her light-armored vehicle, directing accurate artillery and airstrikes. And a group of Taliban came out and, and basically ambushed them. A rocket-propelled grenade hit the side of the light-armored vehicle they were in. She was basically killed instantly. Nicola was Canada's first female combat soldier lost to enemy fire and was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal for her actions and bravery. Today, the Captain Nicola Goddard Foundation installs solar-powered lights in the New Guinea villages of her childhood. A new Coast Guard vessel will bear Nicola's name. I mean, for us as educators, to have a school named after your daughter is, is pretty special. We would like her to be remembered as being good, a good citizen of Canada a defender of the values that we all hold. She epitomized what we want our children to become. Captain Nicola Goddard gave her life doing her duty, making the world a better place. She will always be a monumental Canadian.